Hi everyone, Mature Simmer here. Welcome back to the Back to Basics series in American Truck Simulator. Give you an example of how out of practice I am from being a contractor. I spent probably 30 seconds scrolling around the map going crazy because I couldn't see where my truck was. I can't see where my truck is because I don't own one because I'm a contractor. So I can take anything here. So this is the most profitable per uh, per mile probably the best thing to do because I'm also going to get a bonus there for the urgency so I think I'm actually going to go ahead and take this all right so I'm going to get all my lights turned on since I'm terrible at remembering that all right so we're going to head out. So I'm going to be using a different uh, version of trying to at least be realistic about what my outcome is here. Now wait a minute. Hmm. It's not a great way to go, but I think we'll go here. Since my sim dashboard is not working well on me, I'm actually going to just run a separate timer to know when I'm getting close to half an hour instead of guessing on how long everything has been. Wow, I might have gotten a little too close to those parked cars there with the double trailer. We'll kind of again keep this swung out. But it's definitely interesting out west here. I've got a lot of really long loads with multiple trailers lately, so not a whole lot of parking going on, which I guess is not a terrible thing. It just is. Whoops. Well, that was a terrible thing. Clearly, I don't know where the road begins. <laughs> All right. So we will head out. We've got half a tank of fuel. Should be good. We've got our lights on. It's telling me 11 minutes in real time, which in theory should mean that I could perhaps do two loads again. If I just find two short loads, I'm just not sure how it's going to work, but this will, again, give me that visibility. And I'm just not sure if we're going to go straight. I think I'm going to move over to the left here because there's a lot of trucks. Yeah, we got three or four actually lined up, and there we go. I'm supposed to be left and turn left, so thinking I actually need to turn right here. So hopefully we can make it through here because we should have the longer lights. It's still green and I think we're through so we're yellow. So all right that is good. So then we're just moving along and now we're at least going to get on the interstate and we're going to start hand hand cannot speak today. We're going to start heading down to Rangeley. So down in Colorado. So I-80 West. I need to set my GPS here. So we'll see where we're set. Let me adjust my dash to something that might be useful. Uh, I don't know that there's anything that is terribly useful. So I think 50 is what I'm set at. Oh good, so remember we kept the detours and everything kind of at the normal thing? Well, here we go. Let's see, maybe we can just get right back on because it looks like it's just a semi cracked in the middle here that's just uh, well, FedEx. People aren't getting their uh, overnight shipments too easily here. So I should be able to just go straight. It's just a question of can I make it with the light? Come on. Alright, cool. I just did not want to waste time if I could avoid it in our episode of just sitting there. So let's see, I think I'm at 50, yeah, now I'm at 55. 
So there we go. I get myself to 65. I shouldn't really have traffic coming because obviously the road is closed. Oh, great. So we just get back on to exit again. But it's the only way to get to this road, so it works. Alright, stop sign. Going to East Fleming. Go goodness gracious. I need to figure out what is happening here. Because I am insane with my viewpoint. There's a lot of traffic. Now that I don't have the real traffic thing, like, this is not what I'm expecting. Alright, well, hopefully nobody will run into me. What? was that? Maybe because I had my signal on so long? So maybe it's kind of what I like to call the old man reminder, which happens to me sometimes, where it just starts telling me, okay, you've had your signal on forever. Like, maybe you forgot about it. Alright, so Vernal is this way. Yeah, the challenge we've got, it's telling me 270 kilometers, because again, I cannot, for some reason, get that part to work. So, it seems like it's just forever broken now, which is disappointing, but... Alright, you know what, I'm going to take this down to 70. If it, well, now it increased, so now I can go up to 65 again. I was going to say, I'm going to take it down to 60. My brain is not working in a proper way today, I will tell you that. Alright, so... Yeah, I think we've already moved five minutes from when we should have made it. Just in everything that happened there. And that's five minutes in real time, so... This can definitely start to chew up the time that we've got going on, that's for sure. But I'm not expecting this to be super fast, because we're just doing a lot of driving on these secondary roads for this, this haul here, with these Volvo rims, I think is what our cargo is actually officially known as. So there was an update at some point that gave some Volvo equipment in kind of as part of the base game and they included some components we can haul and things like that. So it's always great to see when SCS does stuff like that to just enhance the game just like when they introduce new truck models other features like that. But if everything goes well we should be well over 20,000 by the time I deliver. And if we have enough time to do anything, you know, maybe I'll find a really short load again, but try to get it in the daytime so that we get a little bit more visibility of the scenery that we have around us. So, moving along. It's telling me I can go that fast, but I really am not sure that that would be accurate. So we're coming up on midnight here. Got some homes or some civilization of some sort, some development at least. Trucks doing some interesting sounding things there. sure if we're climbing. It's hard to kind of gauge what's happening. Oh, and now we've got more road work. So this I'm sure was again some random thing. It literally looks like a bucket and a light on the side of the road. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Maybe they're washing the curb. I don't know. Maybe there was a really bad road kill thing. I had a and my own, I'll call it, you know, I'm calling it half jokingly the murder scene in my garage. I, I uh, pulled out in my car 
and I realized when I came back, because I could see in the garage, I'm like, there's something there, and I realized it's something squished, and it looks like an animal, I'm like, sure enough, I pulled in, I got out, there was a chipmunk that had somehow been behind the back wheel of my car, and the dumb thing was stupid enough not to move when I got in my car and whatever, and I must have run over it when I pulled out of the garage, and it had unfortunately just uh, exploded. I don't know how else to describe it. I mean, he actually looked okay. Like, it, it, I hadn't run over his head, but his body was, like, super flat because, like, literally there was nothing inside left, I think, because only after I had cleaned him out of the garage with the giant exploding blood splatter that was there, on the on the ground on the concrete did I realize there were this little bundle of like intestines and stuff like laying 10 feet out on the driveway so I think literally when I ran over him it like erupted and just shot every his entire innards out onto my driveway so it's just crazy but in any event since we're driving I figured, you know, we'll share some of the craziness that happens sometimes when we're driving. I don't even remember the context that kind of got me there, but maybe it was just on my mind. All right. Uh, Greyhound bus. Kind of an old school design on that. I don't know, maybe they new ones look like that too, but... I haven't seen one in a while. I'm not really in a location where we see a whole lot of Greyhound buses. I think there's a Greyhound bus terminal in the city downtown that I pass when we go to certain things on the weekend, but I've never actually seen buses there, so I'm thinking we're not super active, or maybe that terminal is not even functioning anymore, but I don't really know. Yeah, at this pace, um, this may be the only thing we do this episode, because this has taken a bit. Obviously, some of it is the fact that we're going through some winding secondary roads here. But, um, I know we're getting up on 15 minutes or so in already, and we've still got 125 kilometers, which should be 60, 70 miles, but... You know, it's telling me five minutes in real time, and again, it's moved six minutes on the real time calculator. So I've now added 10 minutes to what was going to be a 15 minute thing. So in theory, I'm operating at like a 25 minute position here. Not quite sure why it's only 40 here. I mean, I can see that crazy turn coming up there. So that's a junction we can't take. A little bit of cow grate, or cattle grate. Oh, I think I've gone around this um, hairpin turn before. Definitely an interesting type of layout. I think there's like a kind of a part of the valley that goes in. All right, it's telling me 25, so I better better slow down before I have a real problem. So this is where, like, daylight would help. But we're at the hairpin. Goodness. Well, it's a nice, quiet little, little drive into the evening. But, yeah, because of the urgency, like, I don't have a whole lot of, whoops, sorry, I was looking at my sim dashboard. It's telling me an hour and 12 minutes in game time, and I have two and a half hours before I'm going to be considered late. So, not sure if they're going down together. I didn't look at them in the beginning. But that's why there was really no option for any kind of sleeping or anything. But we shouldn't have to sleep. Uh, yeah, and that's part of the issue, I guess. Again, I'm like, oh, I'll rest. But 
I, I can't do that unless I'm in a vehicle. So we're kind of stuck taking these when it gives us the jobs. And I don't think there's a delay when I take, take things. Alright, so I'm assuming we're going to get the discovery of Vernal, because it's pretty small and kind of right here. At least it appears to be right here, yeah. I mean, we're seeing the name of the town. So this is good, because I think otherwise, unless you come up specifically this way, we wouldn't get a discovery. There we go. It's like I'm starting to wonder if I'm going to get a discovery. Alright. Heading toward Denver, that would make sense. It looks like we likely missed. All right, we've got a Covenant truck there. They're a pretty big carrier. Cobble Rock Park over there to the left, out my driver's side window. So on the corner of Vernal Avenue and Main Street in Vernal. So now we're going to have to wait, I'm assuming, for the cross traffic to do its thing. It'll get its turn turn signals, and then the through the in intersection traffic will go. Then we'll finally be able to turn. Another four minutes has been added on to real time. So. We'll see where this ends up. CFI. Another CFI truck. Bishop Ranch. Just trying to keep you and me entertained as we sit here and watch things on a 2 a.m. on Tuesday morning. Oh, is that another, that's another Covenant truck. Yep. That is what it is. Oh, there we go. We can now go. All right. Power clogging studio. Admission, one dollar. That's an interesting sign. I will say that. All right. So I think I can go 30. Now I can go 35. And then shortly, I should be able to go faster, but I'm going to have to get out of town before I can do that. And I do think Rangeley is just right across the border. Because Vernal, I believe, is in Utah. So this should get me over the border, probably right when we leave town, I would think. Very close to it. Yeah, the reflection off that sunshade that's hanging over my windshield... I keep thinking there's like a shooting star nearby or overhead going by, and then I realize it's just light reflecting out of that inner corner of that shade over the window. Alright, so service center, but not my truck. Again, it's one with f over 400,000 miles. Is this another bucket? Our customer expects delivery soon. Well, we still have two hours, so... No good, we get that delivery music. But no bucket on the side of the road this time, so they must have cleaned everything up they needed. They just decided to put two cones in there. So we're definitely, I think, in this series going to have more excitement with just things showing up by leaving the default settings there that I don't normally use. All right, 55. We'll see if it goes up to 65. I can see my delivery point. But yeah, at this point, we're definitely just going to go ahead and call it. It might be a little bit sh short because it might be a little bit closer to the 20-minute side, but I'd rather do that than have a 40-45 minute episode that likely no one's going to watch in its entirety because it's too long. All right. Well, I do have real gas stations, so it's interesting that we still saw the gallon symbol, but there is a Texaco there as well, so. 
All right, so Colorado Route 64. Well, this definitely has taken a little bit of a roundabout way to get there, too, so we're absolutely going to spend a little bit of time before we get all the way there. Now, there won't be a parking effort we're going to have to do that's substantially severe. I should just be able to kind of pull in and decouple from the truck. So, should turn right here. Get ready to turn right. There we go. But yeah, to buy anything, buy a garage, whoa, the road is there. I was not expecting that. I was expecting a paved road. So there's a Texaco facility back here. This looks like I'm going into somebody's homestead. There's an oil pump over there. Oil derrick, oil rig. Oil well. One of those should be accurate. I'm sure someone will let me know which one. I'm thinking oil well. I think a derrick needs that whole tall building thing where if you get a gusher or something, it's shooting out of the top. And an oil rig, I think, is a synonym for that. All right, so is it gonna have me go left or right? Or is it just not gonna say? It's just not gonna say, so I guess I'll go to the right. Although I wonder, probably if I didn't pull in, I wouldn't discover the parking lot side. I'm like, I wonder if I had gone the other way, if it at least would have given me that view into what's going on. Oh, this was much better, because if I came in the other way, I'd be making a left turn trying to straighten out the rig. Where this way I'm kind of straight. I can just head for where they want this. And hopefully we'll be able to park and we won't have to do anything other than that. So, should be soon. There we go. Let's see where we're at. Thinking we should level up. We're low enough on the totem pole that that should move kind of quickly. So there we go, 425, so we're level 3 newbie. Alright, so we've done all the just in time. I think I had mentioned I was going to do fragile next, because that tends to be helpful. So we're going to apply that skill point. And let's go look at the email. So the bank is now giving me a larger credit limit. Here it didn't really tell me what it was, but now I, it's letting me know, hey, I could get 500000 if I wanted, but I'm going to be the fiscally responsible truck company owner, and I'm just I'm going to earn my way. I'm going to get my money and buy things. So what I was starting to say is, you know, to get a, a decent truck, I'm probably going to need close to 200000 because I'm going to want something that can kind of take anything, heavy hauls and stuff like that, especially since SCS has been teasing about some kind of new thing coming in the future around heavy haul. So I would love to have a truck that's not limited, which means I need a good high-speed transmission. High-speed meaning a lot of gears. Probably using the totally wrong term, but then a good good engine, but you, you're always trading off then between torque and towing capacity and fuel efficiency and speed. But we are now at 27,286, which I would say is pretty good. And I will see you next time.